Uh, thank you everyone for being here today. Uh, I know there are a lot of great talks out there, so I'm really glad that you chose to attend this one. Uh, my name is Dennis Kleban, and I'm here to tell you why Pulp 3 is going to be simpler, better, and more awesome. Um, so a little bit about myself. I'm primarily a Python developer, and I've been doing that since about 2009. I'm employed by Red Hat, and my primary responsibilities are contributing to Pulp. And in my free time, I like to juggle. So if any of you want to juggle later, you can find me. I have six balls in my bag. <laughs> All right, so I want to start by telling you a little bit about what Pulp can do. Uh, Pulp uh, lets you manage all your packages. Uh, you can mirror external repositories. Uh, you can upload your custom packages to Pulp. And then you can mix all of that content and make it available to different environments in your uh, infrastructure. So what's new in Pulp 3? The greatest feature that we're adding with Pulp 3 is versioned repositories, which means that every time you change content in a repository, a repository version is created and it is immutable. And you can publish that version or roll back to that version, and uh, it just makes things much smoother than in Pulp, 3, uh, Pulp 2. We have also provided a, a very concrete plugin API. And it is semantically versioned so that there is now a Pulp Core plugin package on PyPy that our plugins can depend on. And uh, they can know that as long as they're using a specific version of the plugin API, their plugin is going to work. And we were able to also reduce the size of our code base by relying on frameworks such as Django, Django REST framework, and Swagger. And with this, we were able to create a browsable REST API, which I will demonstrate later in my demo. We also include REST API documentation with every install. And we can take a look at what that looks like here. Um, let me zoom out a little. Um, Maybe a lot. All right. Um, so for every uh, resource and endpoint on your Pulp 3 installation, you can just go to API v3 docs and look up the documentation. Um, we also dropped Mongo. And I am so glad that we did. We finally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're now using a relational database, which can now do joins instead of having to use Python for that. And we decided that we want to make Python our primary packaging method. Uh, so all of our builds are uploaded to PyPy, and you can use pip to install Pulp3. We're also including a, uh, an Ansible installer that will install using some Ansible roles that we publish to Galaxy. And uh, it also installs some config files that you need. Um, Pulp 3 uh, also removes some features. Uh, we decided that uh, the Pulp agent that we were providing with Pulp 2 was not something we wanted to uh, keep carrying. Uh, there are other tools out there that can do a really good job of managing your machines, such as Ansible. Uh, so we recommend to our users to do that. Uh, we also got rid of scheduled tasks. Uh, once again, there are tools that can do this much better than Pulp can. Uh, I believe there is Rundeck, and if you want to use Cron, you could do that. Um, but there are tools out there. Uh, we also got rid of Celery Beat. Um, so there is now one less daemon that you have to run to uh, run Pulp. <coughs> And the responsibilities of Celery Beat have now been distributed to other workers. So all the workers are looking out for each other and doing the work of Celery Beat. And we also got rid of Simlinks. So now when you publish, you don't have to wait on your slow, spinny disks to write out all those Simlinks. All of the publishing happens at the database layer. So where are we with 
Pulp 3 now. Uh, we are in the alpha uh, phase. We're building alpha builds about weekly. We're pushing them all to PyPy, and we're hoping to enter beta pretty soon, uh, in the next few months. Uh, we have one plugin that uh, already works, and that's the plugin I'll be demonstrating today, and that this plugin manages files. Um, we are also uh, already writing a couple of plugins. The Python plugin is under development, and a plugin to manage Ansible roles is also being developed already. And we're going through the planning phase for RPM and Docker, and we're going to be publishing roadmaps for all of these plugins in the near future. And now to uh, my favorite part of the presentation, the demo. So uh, I'm going to be rotating between uh, the terminal and the slide deck here. And uh, here we have a repository that's out on the internet. It contains three files. We also have a user that's going to upload a file. And we also have a pulp, which doesn't have any content in it right now. So let's begin by uh, creating a repository. Uh, we're going to make a REST API call that looks like this with HTTP PI. Mm -hmm. We're going to do that in the terminal. And so the repository got created. So now we have a repository. Um, next, we're going to sync that remote repository that we have. In order to do that, we have to first create an importer. Uh, the important part to notice here is the feed URL. This is the URL that the importer will use to discover content to download. Uh, after we create the importer, we will tell that importer to sync. And the sync will be an asynchronous task. So let's go do that. All right, so this asynchronous task uh, can be followed uh, through the REST API, and this is the browsable API right here. Uh, this is thanks to Django REST framework. Uh, we can see that the task completed and that three content units were added. And as a result, a repository version was created. Uh, the repository version has three files in it, and we can also look at the actual content. <coughs> These are the three files in here. Test one, uh, test two ISO, test ISO, and test three ISO. So now we have a repository version for our repository foo. And we also have those three files stored in pulp so they can be reused for other repositories. Next, we want to publish this repository version. Uh, we're going to make some uh, REST API calls here also. We're going to create a publisher that's specific for uh, the file plugin. And then we're going to call the publish method on that publisher. Uh, publish is also an asynchronous task, which we can follow here. Uh, it has completed, and it created a uh, publication. So here I want to point out a difference between a repository version and a publication. The repository version is an immutable set of content uh, in pulp, and the publication is the same set of content plus any metadata that needs to be uh, present for a client to consume that content. So for the file plugin, it's the pulp manifest file that just lists all the files that are available in that repository. So uh, we already created the publication, and that's what we are showing here, that the publication A is that of uh, repos uh, repository version 1. Now. Whenever we want to make this publication available via HTTP, uh, we need to create a distribution. Distributions basically serve your publications. Um, and we're going to make this a, uh, REST API call, and we're going to specify which publication we want to make available. <coughs> so.
So we made a uh, distribution, which means we can now uh, look at the generated pulp manifest file in our, for that distribution. <coughs> So as you can see, we I performed a curl here on uh, the distribution, and uh, the distribution contains the three files that we uh, synced from our remote repository. So we now have a distribution that's serving our publication. Uh, next, uh, we're going to upload some content into Pulp. Uh, and then, after we upload the content, we're going to add it to our repository. And uh, whenever you add content to a repository, a new repository version gets created. You can add one piece of content, or you can add a bunch of content at once to create a new repository version. So we're going to do the upload, and now we're going to do the create a new repository version. And let's look at the output of this task. The task completed, and it produced a new repository version, which has now four files in it. And if we look at the content, we will see that there is now a new uh, file in there, foo.tar.gz. So we have a new repository version. So let's uh, publish it and create another publication. Now, now that we have a new publication, we want to uh, update our distribution so that new set of content is available at the same path that we published our first publication. So we're going to update the distribution, and we're just going to specify the new publication that we want to be available at that uh, relative path. Oh, yeah, so right now, before the update of the distribution, I uh, curled the pulp manifest, and it still has only three files. We're going to update the distribution and then we're going to go check the pulp manifest, and we see that now there is a fourth file available. <coughs> so, let's talk about content promotion now. In pulp 2, if you wanted to make the same set of content available at a different URL, you had to create a new repository, then you had to copy all of those packages into that repository, publish it again, and then you would get it, be, would have it available at a new URL. In Pulp 3, all you have to do is create another distribution, point it at the same publication that you're interested in serving at a different URL, and you've got it available at a different URL. So we're going to create another distribution. <clears throat> and we're now going to uh, check that it's available at a different URL now. The other URL was foo slash dev, and this one is foo slash test, and it's showing us that it has the same content. Um, this is the link to our YouTube channel. We do demos about once a month. So if you want to follow the progress of Pulp 3 or you want to contribute, uh, join us on YouTube. And uh, I'll take some questions now. Uh, the question is, did we start working on a UI interface? We have not, uh, but all the plugins for Pulp are going to be, uh, they are, uh, Django apps. So it would not be hard for someone to create another Django app that is basically a UI for Pulp 3. So I think this will be a, a great contribution to make to Pulp 3. <laughs> uh, yes? When you 
When will the GA be uh, The question is, when will the GA be available? I don't have an answer for that. Um, we're hoping to go into beta soon and uh, get the plugin writing going. So, can't commit to a date. <laughs> go ahead. When you upload a whole a, a bunch of files, is there an atomic guarantee? The question is, when you upload a bunch of files, is there an atomic guarantee? For the version. For the version. Um, the way the upload API works is that you first upload artifacts into Pulp, and we have uh, an artifact API, and then you convert, uh, then you create content units out of the uh, artifacts. So you do that before adding them to any repositories, and once you've created those uh, content units, you can do a bulk add to a repository and create a new repository version. If there is a problem with adding any of the content units for whatever reason, that version will not be created. And you can try to do it again. <laughs> yes? Um, have you considered uh, uploads via native tools like pip or whatever other tool it uses? Uh, could you rephrase that? If you publish a Python package, for example, using pip, can you also publish it to pulp? Is there anything planned around that? Uh, I believe, uh, the, so the question is, uh, does Pulp plan to support uh, ec publishing? Upload, uploading content. Uh, uploading content using uh, API similar to PyPy? Yeah, or the same one. Like directly from Pip, like Pip uploading into yeah. Pulp. Yes, I believe actually on the Python plugins roadmap, there is a use case that covers that. What about uh, uh, YAM uh, repositories or DNF uh, repositories or RPM packages? What's the state uh, of the plugin? Oh yes. So the question is, what is the state of the plugin uh, of the RPM uh, plugin? Uh, the RPM plugin is being planned, and a roadmap for it will be uh, published soon. Um, it is a very important plugin, so I'm sure development will begin soon. Uh, the question is, will there be Debian support? Absolutely. Uh, with Pulp 2, uh, we added Debian support uh, last year, and it has been a very popular plugin. Um, we have made sure that uh, the plugin API is very uh, straightforward and easy to use, so porting that plugin from Pulp 2 to Pulp 3 should not be difficult. Yeah. And how that replication between data centers, let's say, uh, work? Is the same as Pulp 2? Uh, the question is how will replication between uh, different instances of Pulp work? Uh, it will, we will not have nodes. Nodes were deprecated in Pulp 2, and we plan to support uh, being able to sync from one Pulp into another Pulp, as if it was just another repository out there, and you're just syncing it to your other Pulp instance. Yes? Do you plan to implement uh, OS3 repository? Uh, the question is, is there going to be an OS3 plugin? Yes, there will be. I forgot to put that on the slide. <laughs> Yes? So if I wanted, you know, a year from now to make an HA uh, pulp, you know, uh, endpoint, how, how, how might I do that? An HA pulp endpoint? Yeah. Highly available. Uh, yeah, but yeah. Uh, I believe that that was already built into pulp. And you can skip, like you can have redundant services running, so that if there is a failure, it will fail over. That's already built in. Yeah. Do you want to? Sorry, I, I'm a collaborator. Pulp. Yeah, Pulp um, supports full HA both in Pulp two and Pulp three. Um, each piece, there is no single point of failure at a, at any level. Um, it's been a, one of our goals. And Pulp three, right from the word go, is going to support. Can you repeat that? Yes. Um, 
I'm going to repeat for the camera. Uh, the Pulp 2 and Pulp 3 both uh, are fully HA. Can Pulp be a container registry? Uh, the question is, can Pulp be a container registry? Uh, Pulp itself cannot be a container registry. There's a, another project that we work on also. It's called Crane. And it works together with a Pulp Docker plugin to be a registry. The, so the content is stored in Pulp, but it's actually served by uh, this other project called Crane. Yes? Uh, you imported, well, when you imported data, uh, you imported it from a, a Pulp manifest. Uh, is it possible to import data from uh, a data source that isn't um, like, uh, uh, managed by Pulp, or like, is that uh, is it flexible enough to have custom imports? Yes, yeah, so Pulp is designed to uh, have plugins. Oh, sorry, I'm going to repeat the question. Is it possible to uh, import content into Pulp that is not, does not have a Pulp manifest? Um, the Pulp manifest is only required by the file plugin. Uh, each plugin is uh, dedicated to particular content types. So uh, the RPM plugin is going to support importing YUM repositories. And uh, every plugin d does its own thing. Yeah. And you probably can write a custom API. Yeah, you can uh, create whatever kind of plugin you want. I like to say that, and it, you can write a plugin for managing your cat photos, though the file plugin kind of does that. <laughs> okay. Thank you, everyone. Mike.